Hello and welcome to the third in my Helium tutorial series. Uh, this one's going to be focusing mainly on the controller lane. Now in uh, the first uh, tutorial we looked at using the controller lane to edit notes, note velocities. Uh, but in this example we want to look at how to add and edit controllers such as modulation. So to begin I'm going to uh, find a nice little chord progression. Now the MIDI clip library I'm using here is a fantastic one. Uh, it's got all the uh, chord sequences and everything you'd ever want. And what's more, it's free. So I'm going to leave a link in the description and it's well worth downloading and checking out for yourself. And watch tutorial 2 on how to install them. So starting version 1.02 you can always tap and hold on one of these chord progressions to preview it and see if it's something you want. And this sounds quite good, so I'm going to drag this to the timeline with drag and drop. Now, because I want to play this back as a loop, I'm going to select the first four bars on the ruler and turn loop mode on. I'm also enabling sync as well, so that we can sync up with AUM's host transport. So we've now got a nice chord progression, which is sending MIDI out to Chameleon. Um, on MIDI channel 1. So I'm going to bring up the controller lane and resize the interface a little. Now you can see here that we're currently editing modulation but if you click on that uh, modulation button you'll see that there's a whole list of CC's we can change. Um, in this case modulation is something we can send and hear the results of quite quickly so we'll use modulation. Now I'm going to start this transport running so we can hear what's going on as we perform edits in the controller lane. Now I'm going to long press on the draw tool icon and select the, make sure the paint tool is selected because that's what we need to draw in controllers. And we can just simply paint our finger across uh, the display to lay these controllers and you can hear them in action. Now one important thing I want to draw your attention to is the density of those recorded controllers. Currently we're actually recording a controller every 16th note um, and that's controlled by the quantize setting within the controller window. So it works slightly different to the quantize setting for notes. Now using the selection tool I can demonstrate that uh, I can select various um, sections of these controllers uh, just by dragging a selection and I can also um, scale this by dragging that selection up and down to uh, um, and even left to right to be honest to move that block of controllers and you've got the same pasteboard options on that left toolbar that you have for notes so you can cut copy paste and duplicate a block of controllers this way but I'm just going to remove them for a second now if I click on the quantize button you'll see that we currently quantize into 16th notes which means we draw the droid density for these controllers is 16th notes and if I change that to quarter notes you'll see the difference that made it just makes the controllers uh, a little bit more sparse but that's a good way to control the amount of controllers that you're painting because it can get a little bit out of hand painting controllers willy-nilly at uh, uh, at 1 64th uh, note intervals but if you have something that requires uh, fast movement then obviously changing the uh, the quantized value to something a little bit lower will give you more resolution so I'm going to long press again on the edit tool and select the ruler this time and the ruler is great for drawing gradients so it actually snaps to beat boundaries uh, so it's pretty accurate for drawing uh, up and down ramps um, and I think this is probably the way you'd want to do fade in and out with controllers. Now on occasions you want to be very specific with controller values and to demonstrate how we can uh, be more precise in, in, in our drawing of values I'm just going to paint in some quarter note modulation here. I'm going to go back to the draw tool. Now the draw tool is a very accurate tool 
we can tap and hold on any one of these uh, quarter note uh, modulation nodes and we can drag vertically up and down and we can get a direct readout of the value at that point in time. Now the draw tool can also be used just for adding one off nodes so I can just simply tap on the screen and drag up and down vertically to add um, a node at a specific point. Now if you're restricted by the amount of height you've got you can hold, tap and hold on the controller button and select the uh, expand uh, controller height uh, option and um, we can also turn on an additional ruler for accuracy so you're not measuring everything against the uh, ruler at the top of the notes grid now you'll also notice a shaded area that uh, is visible between each of the uh, painted controller nodes and that gives like a relative position of where that controller is at any one point in time because if you have two nodes that are both off screen you've got no idea what the current value is um, that can be turned off if required so the only other uh, editing tool that is left to demonstrate is the erase tool and with the erase tool selected you can just drag it across the screen to remove anything out of that physical position now I'm going to but reselect the um, draw tool and we, I'm just going to paint in a couple of uh, sparse markers just to distribute across the screen and you'll see that that ghosted area um, is visible even when we go onto screens where there are no controllers but it, it's a good way of giving you a relative idea of what, where the controller is what the value of that controller is at any point in time and as I mentioned before, you can actually turn this off if you don't want it or you don't like it. It does look a little bit cleaner without it, but it's very useful. Now, one thing I want to make you aware of is that uh, currently we're looking at velocity. And velocity, when we're editing velocity in the uh, in the controller lane, it, it handles it a little bit differently, velocities, because they're tied to the notes. They're not really controllers in their own right. And because of that... Um, a lot of the tools work on a selection so right now because all the notes are selected this line tool is affecting the selected notes but uh, if i was just to make a part selection and uh, and then try that same thing again as you can see look we're just affecting those selected notes so just be aware of that and likewise uh, because we're editing velocities here which belong to the notes uh, making a selection of these notes and then trying to do something like duplicate within the controllers will do nothing because if you want to duplicate those notes you're going to pick the duplicate options from the uh, notes toolbar so just be aware of that and finally I want to go over something that should have been covered in tutorial one but I omitted uh, and that is the ability to use uh, ghost notes now these are very handy when you're constructing songs and you have a number of tracks you may have a bass track and you may want to lay a set of chords in re relation to those uh, bass notes so you can see here i've got three uh, different tracks and if i want to add notes to track four and i want to uh, lay them in relation to track one you can long press on the track button and then select the guide track from there and you just get a bunch of ghosted notes from track one and that can be used as a guide for actually laying notes on track four so that just about concludes this tutorial um i will have plenty more in store for you soon so again thanks for watching uh, don't forget to thumbs up and i'll see you next time yeah.